Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a very recent release of a tremendous amount of data from the so-called Project Breakthrough Listen. This is our attempt at finding extraterrestrial intelligence out there and in this video you're going to discover what we found out. Although I don't really want to disappoint you because we haven't really found much. However, there is some good news coming out of this. Let's talk about this and welcome to Math. The wonderful project known as Breakthrough Listen is one of the biggest attempts humanity has ever undertaken in trying to discover extraterrestrial intelligence. It's essentially based on obviously listening for various radio frequencies out there in outer space and trying to identify something that might appear artificial or extraterrestrial. Or actually not just extraterrestrial or artificial, it also has to appear as if it was created by some sort of intelligence somewhere out there. And in the last few years, the Project Breakthrough Listen has now become the major observation system for trying to detect extraterrestrial intelligence in outer space. And all of this mostly is because it's privately funded, specifically by the Russian-born American entrepreneur Yuri Milner and his wife Julia. Milner has already put in around $100 million or so in trying to establish an effective system for humans to look for extraterrestrial intelligence. Or, once and for all, settle the question of, are we alone? Yes, we are. But anyway, so that's the project in a nutshell. You can learn more about it in the description below. But now they've also released one of the major new updates, and it's completely open for everyone to access. The website that I posted in the description has this link to open data. And the recent release of open data includes roughly around 2 petabytes, which is equivalent to about 2000 terabytes of data that has not really been processed yet. In other words, it's the data collected by listening to the center of the galaxy and some of it might contain the messages from extraterrestrial intelligence. But we don't really know if anyone is talking to us because it hasn't been processed. Which is why the foundation decided to make it open so that anyone can go and try to look for it themselves. And although you do need a little bit of training to try to figure this out, it's absolutely possible to do this yourself without any actual formal training in any university. In other words, there are already a lot of so-called citizen scientists doing this in their free time by using the resources available right here from Berkeley University, Berkeley SETI specifically, and by then essentially getting all of their data from the form itself available through the website in the description. And this specific galactic survey, as you would call it, focused on one specific area where we think we have the highest chance of discovering something. The so-called galactic center. Basically, the area with the highest density of stars and everything else for that matter. And the area where there might be something going on and someone communicating. This idea is especially based on the so-called shelling points or focal points originally proposed by the very famous Thomas Schelling, who was famous for developing a lot of game theories and a lot of economics-related theories as well. And one of them was in regards to the so-called focal points, although now we usually refer to them as Schelling points named after him. So what this refers to is to the idea of various alien species being out there, but being unable to communicate with us. And if you can communicate with someone and you cannot actually see them, you have to find a way to strategize in order for you to come up with a potential way to communicate or a potential way of doing things together without true communication. The way he actually explained it is by using various Cold War analogies and also by essentially integrating various game theories ideas into trying to understand how people, and in this sense aliens as well, would actually do things without being able to communicate. So, for example, let's just say we would like to find a way to communicate with someone we cannot see. We thus need to come up with a strategy where we know that they will do very similar things to what we'll do. So, for example, since we communicate with radio waves, we can make an assumption that some kind of an alien super intelligent species will also be using radio waves for communication, at least to some extent. This is one of the possible shelling points. The other point we can make out of this is that there has to be an area somewhere out there in the galaxy where all of the intelligent species will try to kind of connect with one another. Think of it as a kind of a marketplace where everyone comes in and is then able to do all kinds of things like trade and so on. Now, where would this area be? Well, if we apply Schilling's theories, this area should be right in the center of our galaxy or somewhere in the vicinity of the center where it's relatively safe for 
people and aliens and various species to survive and not be destroyed by radiation. And since this area is also very rich in energy and there's a lot of potential for harvesting energy for other resources and also just for communication in general, this would be a perfect location for conducting extraterrestrial business. Or at least to make new friends. Now, in this case, we don't think there's an actual market there, but there might be beacons of communication, sending out signals, sending out all kinds of different messages, possibly even different types of guidance. So we expect to see something there, assuming other aliens act and sort of think in the same way as we do. Which is why Project Breakthrough Listen did just that. They listened to the center of the galaxy for just a few years, I guess, and they decided to produce all of this data and make it available for anyone willing to analyze it. Mostly because there is a lot of data and just not enough researchers doing it. And remember, in the last few years, citizen science has become really advanced. There are actually a lot of different amateur scientists, amateur astronomers finding out things that other scientists were not able to find. Like, for example, the second ever um, interstellar comet, the so-called Comet Borisov, was also found by an, an amateur scientist. And um, even the famous Demin Tabby star was technically discovered by citizen scientists as well. It became uh, prominent once the researcher picked it up and actually started analyzing it, but it was originally discovered by amateur astronomers. And although previous analysis only focused on 1 to 4 GHz, now we have data going all the way to 12 GHz of radio communication, allowing more different frequencies to be analyzed for potential communication. Now this is kind of what we use here on Earth as well. These are very common frequencies for satellites, for example. Also, as you probably know, your Wi-Fi works at 2.4 to 5 GHz range. So all of these frequencies are technically what we would call shelling points as well. But even though the main purpose is to find aliens or alien communication, this data can also also be used to find different anomalies that might be out there and could help us explain phenomena we don't really understand just yet. For example, FRBs, fast radio bursts. And what's really interesting here is that up until I guess about 5 to 10 years ago, we had the opposite problem. We had a lot of people interested in SETI. SETI was actually really, really popular. I had it running on several computers trying to analyze data as well. But um, as time went on, we kind of reversed the situation. Now we have a lot of data coming in, but unfortunately not enough people interested in analyzing the data or just not enough researchers interested in the idea of looking for extraterrestrial intelligence to begin with. And honestly, I think it's because of the TV show known as X-Files that was very popular approximately 20 years ago. And then as the TV show sort of disappeared, so did the interest. Nevertheless, because the data is freely available, I expect a lot of people to join in at some point, and we already have several papers coming out even within only a few days after the data was released. And interestingly, well, right now we haven't really found anything. This particular study you can find in the description below as well. Analyze the stars located in the so-called Earth transit zone. Essentially, these are the stars that uh, would be able to see Earth transiting in front of the Sun, which would uh, allow aliens to see our planet Earth in the same way that we see other exoplanets and discover them using telescopes like Kepler. And by analyzing frequencies between about 3 to about 8 gigahertz, they've unfortunately identified only one potential candidate for some sort of a communication that could have been from aliens. But upon further analysis, it turns out it was from an Earth-based satellite and not from aliens. In other words, nothing was discovered from this particular study, and unfortunately we'll have to keep looking. And one of the main reasons why Earth Transit Zone is so important for us uh, in looking for potential extraterrestrial communication is because of, once again, these so-called challenging points. This is literally what we're doing here on Earth, we're looking for these exoplanets and then trying to see if anyone is talking to us, and so if aliens are doing the same, and are actually thinking the same way we are, they would also be trying to communicate with potential planets that they can see transiting in front of their stars. And so unfortunately, as of today, none of the breakthrough listen data has discovered anything. But we've only scratched the surface here. We've only analyzed a very, very small amount of frequencies and stars. With such a tremendous amount of data that's been released though, there's a lot of things we can still discover, even if it's not aliens. We could still maybe discover some unusual phenomenon we've never really known about before. And the good news is that SETI itself is also adding a lot of new components to various available telescopes, which will allow us to collect even more data during regular observation missions. So in the next 5 to 10 years, we'll be able to collect so much data that we'll definitely need a lot more researchers or even amateur scientists like you, possibly looking through data and trying to discover something out there. 
And just like with so many things in science, this could be discovered by a completely regular person using the data that's openly available. In other words, this could definitely be you. So go find out how to do this, check out the sites I posted in the description, and try this by yourself. Anyway, on that note, once we discover more of interesting things about what could be hiding in this data that was just collected, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. But until we discover something else, that's really it. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. Alternatively, you can also support this channel by purchasing one of the posters or t-shirts with wonderful person in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye-bye.